So is nuclear annihilation right around the corner? Ah, who cares? I'm worried about something far more dangerous, global warming. According to The Atlantic, this is real. Energy is not the only domain that has a direct bearing on whether we have a livable climate or not. So does foreign policy, specifically nuclear war. And I will say that is true. Bad news, a nuclear bomb gives off about 100 million degrees Celsius. Good news, it's a dry heat. With a media this dumb, count me among the millions of Americans running toward the mushroom clouds. All right, head over to blazetv.com slash stew. The promo code is stew. That's how they know you like this stupid show and you'll save 10 bucks on your subscription to Blaze TV. Today we have the NFL versus Me Too, Elon Musk threatening Russia, and of course we're going to do war gone woke. I hope you're, you hope you're uh, in your seat today because there's a lot to worry about. Este Lauder has announced Monday it has decided to suspend all commercial activity in Russia. Mm -hmm. including closing every store we own and operate, as well as our brand sites and shipments to any of our Russia, uh, Russian retailers. Now, sure, they have air superiority and more nuclear weapons than all of NATO combined, but how will the Russians fight a war without Estee Lauder bronze goddess? I, I really don't know. I mean, it's really a devastating assault on Russia right now. Plus, a bunch of artists gag gathered at the Guggenheim to throw paper airplanes. Look at that. They're throwing paper airplanes from, from the walkways in a support, I guess, of a no-fly zone. And exactly the kind of nuanced consideration required when risking World War III. The good thing is, of course, this is the single most meaningful thing any artist has ever done. I mean, to be clear, it has absolutely no significance whatsoever, but it is still the single most meaningful thing that any artist has ever done. I don't even know what kind of war this is. I see what Russia's doing. I see the way Ukraine is fighting back. That I recognize as war. What, what the rest of the world is doing is kind of just bizarre. There's a lot of economic stuff going on, some of it w which is important. But really, we're starting to see the bizarre outcomes of a colliding of the woke culture that has uh, taken over the world and like real life. You don't want to be at that intersection. That intersection has very strange outcomes. Like, for example, how a transgender Ukrainian man escaped Russia's invasion. I painted my nails violet and wore mom's shirt to look more girly. Now, for those keeping track at home, a transgender man was uh, someone who was born a woman and now is saying that they're a man. It's unclear whether they've gone through any sort of surgery to make this changeover a little more official. Uh, but that's the basic thing we're talking about here. Now, what's interesting about this, of course, is there are very specific things that men do in war. And as we are all very, very clear on, when you are a transgendered man, you are a man. You are no longer a woman, nor do you get any of the benefits associated with being a woman, like, I don't know, not having to fight in wars. Uh, this is a story of, uh, his name is uh, Andri. He read the news that all men in Ukraine, uh, 18 to 60, were not permitted to leave the country and obligated to serve in the military. So your country's getting attacked. All hands on deck here, at least manly hands. If you got the big manly hands, we need you firing them, using them to fire uh, guns at the, at the enemy. So, as we all know, this real man, of course, Andre, who was born a woman but is no longer a woman at all, 0% woman now, but they're a woman now, Oh, no, they're a woman then. Now they're a man. Sorry, I'm getting confused. Uh, we all know what's going to happen there. Of course, they're going to take the responsibility of a man and fight for their country. Andre, not his real name, thought the major challenge in his life would be his gender transition from female to male. But when Russian bombs started to fall on Kiev, Ukraine, he was forced to um, embark on another journey from a citizen of Ukraine to war refugee. Now, wait a minute. That doesn't sound like... That doesn't sound like Andre is sticking around. 
seems like he might be bolting for the border. And unlike the way that I do after work every day on the way home, when I run for the border, that's totally different. Uh, he told Insider that he needed to stay with his mother and care for her. Leaving her to flee Ukraine alone was just not an option. You see, it wasn't about him. Now, I want you to be I want to be completely clear about this. It's not like he didn't want to face the oncoming Russian uh, army. No, 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 no. He just wanted to protect his mommy. And that's why uh, he he decided he wanted to bolt across the border. Andre uh, had to revert to being a person he was not a shadow of the person he was before, a painful gender dysphoria inducing process. Now, you may have seen some videos from Ukraine where a bunch of um, people are being killed in the streets, buildings blowing up. But did you did you think about the real downside here, which is this guy who had to paint his nails purple and dress in a dress uh, to, because he had to transform back into a woman so he could escape the duties of the man, which he now was because he was transgendered. Got it? This makes all the sense in the world. You know, it's one of those things where we, the math is, is off here. We're told that someone who's born a woman and transitions to a man is a man and therefore has all the responsibilities of a man. Look, I know it's old timey. I know it's chauvinistic. I know it's antiquated. But guys are supposed to, in my view, stand up and try to protect women. That's what we're supposed to do. And if you're going to be a guy, it comes with that really, really tough responsibility sometimes. You know, women do a lot of really difficult things. And a lot of times they're a lot tougher than guys are. But sometimes guys need to step up and they need to be able to do their duty, especially for a country. You know, guys have always been who countries have depended on to fight wars. And if you're going to transition to be a guy and tell everyone you're a guy and yell at everyone when they use the wrong pronoun toward you, you're going to need to step up and take on the responsibilities of a guy. But instead, because the entire world, especially our media, has gone woke, instead of criticizing this man who is leaving the country against the law, dressing up in female clothes to escape the nation and defending of their country, we are instead going the opposite way and praising the bravery of the transgendered person who, oh, now we can kind of say she's kind of a woman. So that's okay if they leave. It's all, it's perfectly all right. We'll not only praise the person leaving, who we were told until recently was a man, but also we're going to praise the organization that helped her, him, escape the country but and uh, and from everything from dressing up to painting fingernails to asking what sorts of surgeries they have this is the world we live in now look the truth is i sort of doubt that the fighting forces of ukraine are all that upset about all of this my guess is they probably can do without someone willing to paint their nails purple and wear a dress to avoid fighting the Ukrainian fighting forces probably don't shed a tear about any of this, but it's another window into the stupid crap we worry about in America. If we really believed that this woman was actually a man, we would expect her to fight just like all of the other able-bodied men. But we don't believe that. The inconvenient truth, of course, is that they don't believe it either. Nobody actually believes it. Our entire society just embraces this bizarre state of self-imposed ignorance. We act as if men are women and then women are men. We act as if calling someone by the wrong pronouns is a capital offense. And we act as if someone's gender is the most important thing in the world. Well, I guess third most important behind skin color and global warming. Oh, and by the way, on the global warming front, one more time from the Atlantic. If a nuke goes off, remember this. Anyone within seven miles of the uh, detonation would suffer third degree burns, the kind that sear and blister flesh. These conditions, and note that I have left out the organ destroying effects of radiation, would rapidly turn an eight mile blast radius into a zone of total human misery. But only at this moment of the war do the climate consequences truly begin. <laughs> now, maybe it's just me, but once your flesh is blistered and your organs are destroyed, I'm feeling like I'm no longer worrying about sea level rise and the dew point changing a little bit. For all of you social justice warriors out there, take a little solace in the fact that you live in a country that mostly protects you from going through real strife 
like they are going through in Ukraine, allowing you to worry about much more frivolous concerns like skin color, pronouns, and yes, global warming. And don't let your heart be troubled. You don't have to deal with this problem. All Estee Lauder products remain on the shelves. So have you ever stopped to wonder why internet access is so much cheaper these days, like 30, 40 bucks a month in a lot of places? It's because internet service providers aren't just making money off of subscription fees. They're also making money from spying on your internet activity and selling your history and data to big tech companies. So what's the best way to make sure that 100% of your data is encrypted and that your ISP can get a hold of it? Uh, or they can't get a hold of it. Uh, you, got, you got it, it's ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN creates a secure tunnel between all your devices and the internet so that everything you do online is encrypted. It reroutes your connection through a secure server. This blocks your ISP from seeing everything that you do online. Uh, all they can see is that you're connected to an ExpressVPN server. Uh, and beyond that, um, they can't see anything. And it's not just for your phone or your computer. ExpressVPN works on all of your devices. It works on your tablets, your smart TVs, even your router, so you, uh, you and your entire family can, be, uh, can stay protected. I will say this. Um, I don't. I would have never known how easy it was to use ExpressVPN, um, but like it's like when you all you have to do is open up the app and you press one button to connect. Seriously, that's it. I press it one time and now I'm connected. Now I'm protected. That that quickly. It's really really easy. Visit expressvpn.com/stew. Get an extra three months of ExpressVPN protection for free. It's e x p r e s s v p n dot com slash stew. Expressvpn.com slash stew. I'm joined once again by Dan Andros. He's a managing editor of CBN's FaithWire.com. They're doing a Pray for Ukraine event live from Ukraine and Poland. You can learn more by checking out at CBN.com slash Pray for Ukraine. CBN.com slash Pray for Ukraine. Dan, how's it going? It's going great. Thanks for having me. Uh, I want to go to much less important things uh, than yeah. actually what's going on in Ukraine because I need a distraction. Unfortunately, some of the stuff is can get a little dark as well. Uh, let's go to the NFL where we have a situation with a uh, Houston Texans quarterback, uh, Deshaun Watson. Now, Watson, mm. before last year, uh, had accusations come at him um, by many, many women uh, that he had – Pulled some shenanigans, uh, as shall we say, uh, during some mas massages. These women were identified as masseuses. Uh, there were, I believe, 10 criminal complaints uh, that were uh, brought down to the, uh, to the level of potential charges. Uh, and 22 women who accused him in civil lawsuits. Just last week, uh, they have a situation where they go to the grand jury and none of the criminal charges come through. So he's now clear of the criminal charges. This is a guy who's one of the best young quarterbacks in the league. Uh, and the question is now, what do teams do? How do teams look at this? What do they think about all these allegations? And can this stuff, would you be confident trading for a guy like Deshaun Watson, uh, given today's climate? Well, given the given the quarterback situation around the NFL, there are a lot of teams who are who were all in the moment the moment they saw that he wasn't going to be indicted, and that the you know that the courts decided and the you know uh, the powers that be decided no, we're not going to pursue this any further. I guarantee you, there are a lot of teams lining up right now uh, to pursue just that because uh, I think they're saying that it is worth the risk. Um, that if he's been cleared, you know, and they're going to meet with him. That's the reports that I've been seeing. They're going to meet with him to see what he says, because I, I think it doesn't take a rocket scientist to see that masseuses uh, <laughs> who he paid to travel around from city to city maybe weren't really masseuses. <laughs> yeah. Just saying maybe they had an actual different job that they couldn't say out loud, you know, for because of different state laws for that sort of behavior. Mm. Um, so it seems, and like he can't, of course, say that out loud either, because then he might be guilty of other breaking other laws. So none of this is good. Uh, unfortunately, extreme talent tends to make these things sort of go away. It's, it's true. It's an interesting uh, thing to think about because, number one, I think if you if he is guilty of these things, you don't want him on, on your team, obviously, no matter how good he is. You don't, you don't want a guy who's sexually abusing women on your team. Right. Though I will say the Cowboys have to be at least partially interested because it fits their profile so well. Um, <laughs> but, like, when you talk about bringing in a guy like this, 
you have to, number one, believe that multiple, you know, two dozen women almost uh, are all sort of colluding around this false allegation, uh, which is not impossible. I mean, it's not impossible, but I don't know that we've seen a lot of examples of that being true. But you have to believe that they're, uh, that they're colluding around this sort of false idea. And then you have to believe that if you bring in a quarterback like Deshaun Watson, which is going to cost you a lot, a lot of draft picks, a lot of money, that the second a new allegation comes out by someone real or imagined, you're going to be able to keep him on the field and power through that in today's climate. And I've seen no evidence uh, of really anybody uh, surviving these things uh, from an organizational standpoint. The only thing you've seen is maybe like Donald Trump had allegations. He kind of powered through them. There's been a couple of examples of individuals. But frankly, like when it comes to uh, a big company uh, like a football team or a league like the NFL, they've shown no spine to stand up to uh, when the mob comes calling, whether the allegations are true or not. Yeah, and I think as an owner, if you're an owner, you know, like a Jerry Jones who will, like you said, he'll hire whoever. I mean, he's, he's going down. It's practically like the replacements out there. Let's go down to the jail and see what we can find and see if we can spring them here early and get them out there. If they can run well, we're going to we're going to throw them out there on the field. Uh, but you have to worry if I mean, you might be you might have a spine of steel as an owner. But if the league is going to just suspend a guy on you, well, there's nothing you can do about that. And so that is a big risk for these teams. And I would say that's probably the biggest thing that they're checking on. Um, because look, again, you know, when you look at kind of these accusations and if they're true, like you said, horrible, but um, you know, when, when you're flying masseuses around from city to city and it's, you're probably not really uh, a masseuse and it, the charge really is, you know, maybe just being sexually active, which not condoning, you know, outside of marriage here as a Christian, but if you're going to start not hiring guys because they're sexually active in the NFL, you're not going to get any players. I mean, that's just, <laughs> I mean, that's just the nature of the beast there. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, so I, you know, they've got to balance that. And, um, I think it really comes down to how legitimate do they think all these claims are. And, you know, it's unfortunate if they're not legitimate because I think it really ruins it for women who actually are abused and, um, you know, then then their claims get watered down and perhaps ignored when people try to go for a money grab at times. But we don't know on this one. We just don't know what the truth is. Yeah. I mean, in the, you know, thinking of this as, uh, you know, as a as a fan, of, I'm a Philadelphia Eagles fan, as you know, Dan. And, you know, the Eagles. I'm have sorry a, about that. Yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> I, hey, look, I'm doing a show in Dallas and all I do is rip the Cowboys. So I'm used <laughs> that's, to it. That's one of uh, them. Uh, but it's, it's interesting that, like, you know, people talked about getting Deshaun, Jess, uh, Deshaun Watson, who would be a big upgrade from uh, the Eagles quarterback situation right now. Uh, but it's not just the risk of having a guy who may have done terrible things and may be accused of something that will get him tossed off the field before a playoff game or whatever. It's also, you have to, you have to invest a lot here. You're talking probably, if you look at the, just the Russell Wilson package, multiple number one picks, multiple number two picks, players, late round picks, $40 million a year. I mean, there's a lot you're putting into this, and you realize you're at the, at the whim of some probably Cowboys fan who before a big Cowboys game would come out with a false allegation against Deshaun Watson once he became an Eagle. I'm not saying I've thought this through a little bit, but it is, you are at the whim in this day and age. You have to think about this uh, differently, and I think unfairly, because if Deshaun Watson is guilty, there have to be at least two thirds of the, or excuse me, innocent. There, there have to be two thirds of the teams out there right now that are saying, you know what, I just don't want to risk it. Yeah, and and I mean that is the weird thing in all this too is you know we talk about dirty politics. We know that there are shady people in both, you know, these operatives in the GOP and the and the Democratic Party. Both sides have them that are just digging up Oppo research. They're they're you know, putting out honey traps and all this other kind of stuff. What is to stop a billion dollar franchise in the NFL <laughs> to tank another team uh, by doing something like that? I mean, it definitely incentivizes it because if somebody, like you said, takes a $40 million risk on a quarterback and their arrival in your division and you can just throw out one accusation and the NFL is going to suspend a guy while they're investigating it. I mean, it sets up, a, you know, the, the, this accusation culture where, where just the accusation, I, I, isn't it bizarre, Stu, that we've kind of lost this presumption of innocence in society today? I think that's sort of like what the mob culture has done. Y yeah. You're no longer presumed innocent. Nobody wants to even deal with it. If there's an accusation out there, they're like, forget it. 
we're done with you. We, we can't even deal with this Twitter heat. We're done. Um, it's true. So it'll be it'll be really interesting to see, you know, what happens with Deshaun Watson. And it is different with a guy like him when you are a top tier talent. Like I said, people are often willing to take that risk. <laughs> it's very, very true. I will say if I, I'd be advocating for the NFL to go back to what I, I imagine the old school rules were, which is. We're the National Football League. We're not an, uh, a crime investigation unit. Right. When when someone is convicted or at least charged with a crime, then we can start taking action. But at this point, there's not even a charge here. It's really none of their business, uh, frankly, at this point. The team can de- can deal with it however it wants, but they really should step back from trying to be this investigatory source. That's not who they are. It's not what they do. Um, let me, because uh, you, you mentioned uh, you were sorry that I was an Eagles fan. Let's just do a yes. quick review of the Dan Andros fandom history here. Uh, you've got birth till 2019, a Washington Redskins fan. <laughs> then his team gets deleted from the face of the earth, and they don't deleted. even have a name. Uh, yes. And so Dan is completely AWOL from football, boycotting it basically for a year. It was year. on this program. It was on, it was on this program that I dramatically renounced. <laughs> I said if they change the name of the Washington Redskins, it, I would even hope was okay with a name change, but keep the logo, keep the theme, right? Because yeah. we talked about all that and how it, you know, it was made by a Native American activist, all that stuff. And they still didn't do it. So I finally abandoned ship, yes. You abandoned ship. You went to the Indianapolis Colts largely because you like Carson Wentz, who, I, as you point out, you work with CBN. Uh, you've got a Carson I'm, Wentz jersey on. Yes. <laughs> this, is a, this, is now, this is now a garage shirt. I get to wear this in the garage <laughs> when I'm doing projects. So uh, I remember you being so excited to get it, too. I it's know. It's so sad. So Wentz yeah. gets traded now, and of all places in the world, he gets traded back I, to the team that used to be the Washington Redskins, and then was the Washington football team and is now the Washington Commanders. Commanders. So do you na- follow Carson Wentz back to Washington? What happens with you? See, this is tough because I've never changed a team before. This is not something I've ever done, right? Like I've never done that. So it was very weird in the first place. So I had to go somewhere with some draw. And like as a Christian, I, I was a fan of Carson Wentz just because of his faith. Same thing with Frank Reich, and they're both in Indianapolis, and it seems like they got a nice culture there, good organization. So I'm like, you know what? They they took a flyer on Wentz, and they got Reich there, and it seems like all good. I'll, I'll go over there. But my loyalty is tenuous at best. I mean, I just went over there. So, like, you can't give me this traumatic experience in year one. And so somehow Carson Wentz becomes – you know, look, he's up and down, whatever you want to say about him. But, you know, obviously a talented guy. So now then he becomes this Internet meme. And I think the owner, Ursay, I think just couldn't handle it. I, I think mm. he's on Twitter all the time. He, he can't handle the fact that Wentz has become a meme. So he just said, I'm done. Do what you got to do. And I would it, with this. There'd be no internal dilemma here, Stu, if he would have gone, as you said, to any other team. If he would have gone to the Steelers, well, whatever. I'll cheer for him over there. Say, you know, hope he does well. Don't care. But he, this is toying with my emotions, Stu. What do I do with this? He's going back to my team that I've loved since childhood, a guy I really like. But I'm still, I'm trying to stay with the new team here. <laughs> You're and we, we don't have a quarterback now. We, we have no quarterback. It really does. Prove and that I hate Twitter the commander's everything. name. Yeah, oh. I hate it. I hate the commander's name more than anything. It's awful. Yeah, it's dumb. No, the commander's thing is really, really stupid. And I will say too, like you know, uh, the, you know, I like Wentz as well. I, you know, I, he's ha- there's been a lot of anonymous reports about him yeah. and 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 things that you know he, that he's not a good teammate and stuff. But you know. I, I've never seen anybody put put a name to any of these claims. And second of all, like people forget that yes, he ended the year with a couple of really bad games, especially that last game, which was really, I mean, borderline unforgivable. I'll, I'll grant you. But I mean, his he had a 12 game stretch, 12, 12 games last year, where he was third in the league in passer rating. This is not right. a guy who had a disastrous season. He just no. had a couple of really bad mistakes at inopportune times, and then right. to give him away for very little. I mean. It, you know, the Redskins, I think, did actually pretty well with that trade. Well, the Redskins don't exist, but the <laughs> Commanders did. They did do pretty good, Stu. And, and yeah, it's just and it's so weird, too, because Wentz has become sort of like this firestorm on the Internet. And why is that? I mean, is it because he's a Christian and people? I, I don't know. Like, was it the Tebow thing? Like, because, you know, he made he had like one bad interception where he tried to make something happen in the end zone and it <laughs> yes. got he like flicked it and got intercepted. 
Stafford did, I think it was Stafford did the exact same play. This is the guy that won the Super Bowl. He did the exact same play at all in an equally horrible time in a game. And nobody cares about it. It gets, you know, Dak Prescott can throw pick sixes to the Washington football team at horrible times and nearly blow a game they should have had locked up. No one bats an eye. They don't care. Uh, you know, so I, I don't get it. I mean, he only threw seven picks all year and they're oh, he's mistake prone. He's doing all these horrible things like, yes, he made some bad mistakes, but there weren't a lot of them. This wasn't like a common theme. And now everyone's saying, oh, we're going to get Jimmy Garoppolo. <laughs> Oh, wow. Well, oh, geez, he's you never, saw he's that never problem, thrown a guys. bad interception, that guy. No, no, no never. Garoppolo, never, no. <laughs> he's not known for the exact same thing or anything. <laughs> all right, uh, Dan, I guess we could just talk sports all day, but uh, yeah. we've we got to take a break. Uh, Dan Andrus, managing editor of faithwire.com. Be sure to uh, check out Faithwire CBN's Pray for Ukraine event. It's uh, The info is at cbn.com slash pray for Ukraine. It's cbn.com slash pray for Ukraine. Dan, I pray for you and your fandom. Ah, I hope you can you. survive another difficult season in the NFL. <laughs> yes. Thank you very much. So how's that economy going right for you right now? Pretty good? You guys all excited about it? I know I am. Uh, so far, so good with the Biden administration. That's what I always say. Uh, you know, Joe Biden is a little upset. In fact, he seems to be upset all the time. Not even upset, but angry. The guy seems like he's constantly irritated. And, and like, look, I know being uh, the president of the United States, it's a tough job. I can see that. You get a lot of criticism. I'm sure at times Biden feels that it's unfair. Now, he always says always that it's unfair. I don't think he always believes it's unfair. He realizes, just like you do, that you know, he's doing a terrible job. But he has to, of course, feign uh, his, uh, his anger uh, about some of these issues. But he also just is like a crotchety old man. And a lot of times he's talking about something and he just goes off on a really angry rant. He's constantly angry at the press. And like as a Democrat, how can you ever be mad at the press? All they do is want to care for you and prop you up and make your life a little bit better. That's all they're trying to do all the time. And this is how you pay them. I think it's just sad. But here's Joe Biden telling you the truth about inflation. I'm sick of this stuff. We have to talk about it because the American people think the reason for inflation is government spending more money. Simply not true. Hmm. Simply not true. He went on to talk about how really the, the culprit here is Vladimir Putin. And Vladimir Putin is what's causing all of this inflation. And this is a... Uh, I mean, this is like excuse number 18 when it comes to inflation. They've gone through the entire gamut. They, I think they blamed squirrels and rabbits last month, and now it's Vladimir Putin. I don't know. I can't even keep track of all the excuses. But it's never them. That much I am 100% sure of. Uh, but, like, you know, it's funny to see that there is some criticism, including from hardcore conservative sources like ABC News. Although if you look at the numbers, uh, inflation really started to rise almost exactly when 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 Biden came in the White House. Now, oh. now yeah. obviously well, that, that argues uh, my point, uh, doesn't it? But 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 look, look at the look at this chart on gas prices uh, just since February. If if you look at the, I mean, it's it is a it is a shocking increase that do, you know doesn't <laughs> correspond. I mean, and he's right. The uh, the gas prices themselves have inflated more significantly. They were going up before uh, the Ukraine situation, have gone up faster since the Ukraine situation began. But as he pointed out, inflation started going up like right when Joe Biden took over and spent a couple of trillions of uh, a couple trillion dollars we did not need to spend. But, you know, again, ABC News is one thing. They're I mean, what are they? They're all Republicans basically at ABC News, just like the hardcore conservatives over at NBC News. Today, President Biden responding, saying he's fighting to bring down prices, blaming inflation in large part on what he calls Putin's price hike. But prices surged last month almost entirely before Russia invaded Ukraine. Uh -oh. And inflation has been soaring above 5% since last May. Oh. Republicans blasting the president. Gas is over $4 a gallon. And what does Joe Biden say? He said it's all blamed on Russia. Energy prices have been going up dramatically from the day he took office. Hmm. That's not great. Uh, Suboptimal. But again, another conservative uh, source. Can we get somebody who's just honest? Maybe somebody, I know, uh, I don't know, not from uh, from basically right of Breitbart. You know what I'm saying? 
can we get somebody who is going to tell this story fairly? Some, some, some other, I mean, maybe we can still stick with the conservatives for a little while. Like, you know, the former uh, Obama era secretary of the treasury. This is a grave problem. The president was wrong to blame uh, this month's number on Ukraine. Everybody had been expecting from the time before Putin uh, launched the invasion that inflation was going to accelerate uh, from uh, January to February. This is a consequence fundamentally of an overheated uh, economy, and we are not going to have a full solution until we do something about uh, that overheated uh, economy. I mean, literally no one believes the excuses that they're making now. No one believes the, the Saki-isms that are coming out of the White House right now. No one believes it, including the left, including the media. They don't believe it. Larry Summers is one of the guys who came out and said early on, hey, this is not the time to spend $2 trillion. What are you doing? This is one of the most misguided policies I've ever seen. This guy was in the Obama administration. Jason Furman, who's an economist, who was also in the Obama administration, came out when they were passing that bill and said, hey, guys, I mean, I know I'm not always on the conservatives' side here, but let's be honest about it. This is not the time to spend another $2 trillion. We're going to have some real problems with inflation. We, they kept saying it was transitory. Then they, they blamed uh, Trump. They've blamed gas prices. They blamed oil companies. They blamed squirrels and rabbits. And now they're blaming Vladimir Putin. Anybody but themselves. I, I just don't think the American people buy this. Inflation is not one of those things, like so many other issues out there, where you can spin yourself out of the problem. When you have inflation, when people are spending $20 on, 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 on groceries before, now they're spending $30. Maybe when it's a week of groceries, they used to spend $120, now it's $150. When that's happening, they notice. People notice it. You can't tell them it's not happening. It is happening. When they go to the gas pumps and they used to pay $3 a gallon and now they're paying 5 they notice you can't spin them and tell them it's not occurring because they know that it is. They know they didn't get a raise of 40 or 50 percent to pay for that. They know they didn't get a raise for 60 or 70 percent to pay for a new or used car. They know none of that happened. They just know they're getting the shaft. And, you know, Biden can blame everybody else all he wants. But this is coming down to him and the job he's done. And it's the same thing goes with COVID. You know, he came in and he said, I'm going to shut down the virus. He said he was going to shut down the virus. It was going to be gone. Well, then Omicron came uh, and Delta honestly came as well. We are now getting close to a million dead in the country. No one seems to care about it anymore, I guess, because now it would be a, a liability to complain about COVID deaths. So no one really talks about it anymore. Uh, now, Pfizer, the CEO, is saying uh, that he, they need a you may need a fourth shot. Now, I don't know why this is honestly a big news story. I mean, look. Pfizer wants uh, people to get shots uh, because it's their product, you know, right? I mean, like, that's, you know, of course, every, everybody wants to sell their stuff, right? We understand that. Um, now, what they say, of course, if you read the comments fully, the protection we are getting from the third dose, it is good enough, actually quite good for hospitalizations and deaths. The protection after three doses is not that good against infections. When it comes to Omicron, it is necessary for a fourth dose if you want to stop infections. I don't know that you're going to stop infections uh, with 100 doses. I mean, uh, look, I don't, I don't know that that's the way this is, this is going to work. We're seeing that pretty much everything we've thrown at COVID when it comes to actually stopping infection, the only thing really that did much of any difference when it comes to that front was the vaccines up until the end of Delta. And then and now... I mean, you see a little bit of difference in the numbers, but they're not it's not that significant, frankly. If you've had covid, we are now well, there's a new study that came out today that said th that your natural uh, infection likely gives you solid protection. Uh, at this point, this stuff should just be over. There sh we shouldn't even be talking about it anymore. Uh, but the media is still uh, seemingly wanting to go down that road as much as they can. Also, I want to tell you about uh, the new Andrew Cuomo is awful dot com development. Uh, there's a couple of things. There's a big piece in Rolling Stone about Jeff Zucker. I thought about spending a bunch of time on it. Honestly, it's pretty long, it's very detailed. There's a lot of new texts and stuff of, of the back and forth between uh, CNN executives. It's pretty interesting to, uh, to read, though mainly it kind of just focuses on Jeff Zucker at CNN. You can go read that if you like. There's also new emails showing Chris Cuomo working as part of his brother's PR machine. Now in detail, a little bit more detail on that one. 
Uh, one point shows the Chris Cuomo and the governor's top aide, Melissa DeRosa, working alone on a draft of a statement the governor would give responding to harassment allegations. They also show Chris Cuomo discussing how best to attack reporting by the New York Times that revealed the nursing home COVID-19 death toll was far higher than the governor had said. That one's pretty interesting to me because we have not seen a lot about that. Uh, we have seen, um, let me see if I can give you at least the New York Times piece of this. Um, let's see. I highlighted about 20 parts of this to talk about. Uh, the Times reporting. Um, some some uh, Chris Cuomo uh, offered unsolicited advice how to attack the, uh, the Times reporting. He said, for this to be effective, the caps ca uh, caption must say something about the Times being wrong or being misleading. Then say why. Then say you weren't get given time to respond. I mean, he's doing a, a minute by minute sort of pushback against The New York Times here. He talks to DeRosa um, uh, uh, about um, calling uh, for uh, rewrites of speeches that he wound up really writing and then had his colleagues at CNN report on his writing. I mean, so over the top and so ridiculous. It just proves uh, it was something we knew from the beginning. Uh, Andrew Cuomo is awful.com. And I will say that, uh, this, there's a new poll out um, having uh, Kathy Hochul going up, that she's the current uh, governor of New York, going up against Andrew Cuomo in the primary as if I, Andrew Cuomo was going to run again. And he's only like five points behind her. Like, is it possible? I'd kind of get, you know, I told my kids the other day, I was like, look, the Andrew Cuomo is awful thing. It went, it went well for a while, but frankly, you're not going to college. Uh, it's not going to happen. You're not getting a car for your 16th birthday. I don't even know if we're going to be able to afford food next week. I mean, this is, it, look at this economy. Uh, I mean, I'm going to have plenty of food. I'm going to have whatever I want, but you might not have food. And then, I mean, could we get bail Could these kids go to college because Andrew Cuomo runs for governor? Is it possible we will get that blessing? here on this program. I mean, we have been cursed from the beginning. We started this show in February 2020. We immediately had to turn into a freaking pandemic show for multiple years. Now there's war. Everything's collapsing all around the world. Can we not have Andrew Cuomo run for governor? Think of the entertainment and material and Andrew Cuomo is awful dot com mugs. We will sell kids. Maybe your future is a little more bright than daddy thought. I want to tell you about Grip6. They're a small business in Utah. They sell high-quality, made-in-the-USA belts that look great. They function well, and they'll last longer than any belt you've ever worn. If you're outdoorsy, if you're indoorsy, that's okay, too. These are awesome belts because they look great, and they're super, super durable and stylish. They're uh, customizable belts. They can have laser-etched designs and logos and flags, things that make them sort of personal to you. They're minimalist, and they're infinitely adjustable and interchangeable within sizes, and they're high high quality. It's fantastic. Uh, all of uh, Grip6 products, which also include these great socks that I wear all the time, especially when my feet get cold, because Glenn keeps the studio at like nine degrees every day. My little toes, they get cold. They're just little tiny toes, and they're freezing all the time. Well, not when I have my Grip6 socks, uh, and I'm wearing those, and they're not like really thick. You know how you get those thick socks that are supposed to be worn like during snowboarding or something, and you can't even fit them inside your shoes because they're so thick. These keep your feet warm without being like that. They're fantastic. They also have great wallets. All of them come with a lifetime guarantee, which Grip6 calls a lifetime guarantee. And if that doesn't tell you that we're dealing with a solid American company, nothing will. Do yourself a favor today. Shop American. Grip6 is as American as it gets right now. If you go to grip6.com slash stew, you can get 25% off on select items. Plus, you get free shipping on all orders over 50 bucks. And today and tomorrow only, they're running a factory second sale. It's 40% off on their factory seconds, including minor blemishes. Uh, their seconds still have a lifetime warranty. You don't have to worry about that. It's limited quality uh, quantity. And again, it is uh, ending after the 15th. So don't miss out on that. Grip6.com slash stew. Check it out now. Grip6.com slash stew. Wherever you are, you can rate and review this podcast uh, wherever you're, you listen to it. Five stars is the appropriate number of stars. This one comes in five freaking stars. Okay, so here's what happened. I just gave Stu five freaking stars because it's the best show on TV that comes directly before that Glenn guy. Whatever.
Hey, you know what? Again, five stars. We will take your stars however you want to give them to us. You can also comment uh, during the show on YouTube, youtube.com slash America. We had Jesse Kelly uh, on on Friday's show. Uh, this comment comes in. I wish Jesse was wrong, but I'm one of those that got out of the military after 27 years. Not only will we get our butts kicked if we fight someone big, we need to get our translators ready to learn Chinese. The people coming in now are in for college money and the check. God help our army. Uh, it really is a scary uh, situation. This one made me actually happy, though. Usually the comments just make me sad because it means our, usually it's about our, how our c- country is really screwed up. This one, though, is about America's team, the Toronto Blue Jays. Guerrero, Bichette, Springer, Hernandez, Berrios. There's your five freaking stars. Whatever. Go Jays. Yes! Baseball is coming back, and I'm very, very excited about it. Uh, Jeffrey writes in, I love the Veep Thoughts segment. <laughs> Those old Jack Handy skits from SNL were great. Of course, that's the basis of our and now Veep Thoughts uh, bit. Uh, Esther uh, writes in as well, wow, brilliance unmatched from Kamala. It's true, but the only person who can outdo Kamala, as we know, is, of course, Kamala. And now, Veep Thoughts by Kamala Harris. As we all know, elections matter. And when folks vote, they order what they want. And in this case, they got what they asked for. I went off script a little bit. (laughs) This has been Veep Thoughts by Kamala Harris. Okay, so here's what happened. Elon Musk has 77.7 million Twitter followers. And every time he tweets something, it's a, it's a news story. And this is the thing you have to understand about the media. Before Twitter existed, people had to report on things. Like they had to do a, this thing called journalism, where they would actually go out, find sources, try to interview people to get interest in com- content. Now, like they want to write a story about something, and they just search for the topic and look for like the five tweets at the top and just read them to you or write them in their article. Or they have like two or three people they just go back to whenever they tweet anything and they just make them into news stories. You know, uh, Elon Musk is certainly there. Um, Kanye West was there for a while. Uh, Certainly Trump was there for a while. Uh, LeBron James sometimes. I mean, it's just really, it's not not journalism, that's for sure. It's just tweet searching. Uh, But he decided to, (laughs) I mean, I don't even know. He decided to tweet Vladimir Putin. And uh, he said this, I hereby challenge Vladimir Putin to single combat. Stakes are Ukraine. Do you agree to this fight? <laughs> now, I don't know. What would, the guy is like 70. So you'd think maybe Elon could take him. But Elon does not look to me like a guy who's going to win a fight against somebody, does he? He's like a tech nerd. I don't know. It doesn't seem like he would win. He, he would be a... A, a brutal uh, guy in combat, and this is a former KGB agent. I feel like Ukraine's like, yeah, let us just, we'll just take our, our chances with our one quarter of the troops against these guys. Anyway, uh, the, the Russian SpaceX, the head of that, responded, and he said, you, little devil, are still young. Compete with me, weakling. It would only be a waste of time. <laughs> so I don't know. <laughs> this is bizarre. I feel like Elon Musk just lives in this world where he just does whatever he wants. I've said this before, but if I were a billionaire, I would live, I would be doing it like Elon Musk. Not for global warming, but I would just be making like flamethrowers for no reason. And I would just be challenging other dictators to fight. And and just, it would just be fun to do. I think I should be, I'd be a really good billionaire. You should give it a shot. Go to studosmerch.com, make me a billionaire. And then you could see if I live up to this bargain, you know? And if not, you guys will own me on Twitter. You said you're going to be a really fun billionaire, and you're not a fun billionaire. StuDoesMerch.com. We can all see it happen together. And BlazeTV.com slash Stu. We will see you tomorrow.